going. Hello, this is Dick. Welcome to Popcorn on the Macabre. And I'm sitting here with the Chatterer, also known as Chad or the Chad. The Chad. And um, yeah, we're about to provide a commentary for the the classic sequel. I'm not gonna say classic this time. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, Sleepaway Camp Three. We're about to go to camp again. Um, we were just at Camp Rolling Hills. Now we're moving on to Camp New Horizons. Like, <laughs> excuse me. Are you okay, sir? <laughs> <laughs> it's this New Horizons. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Never mind the uh, the coughing and the the gurgling sound. There's nothing going on here. We're yeah. not we're not smoking anything. No. There's no smoking here. I'm smoke free. <laughs> I do not smoke cigarettes. No, no. But yeah, we're um, we're about to just dive right in, um, and we're the Scream Factory edition of Sleepaway Camp Three. So we'll give another shout out to our buddy Nathan Milner who did the artwork for this. It's fucking awesome. But uh, yeah, I, you know, we're we're just gonna watch it. We're gonna. You know, talk about some things, some things we like, some things we don't like. Oh, yeah. And as always, we're going to give our uh, popcorn kernel review at the end of it. What do you think of the, uh, you know, we were talking a minute ago of of the original cover art of this chick. Yeah. How does it rate for you? Uh, if I were to rate just the cover art? Yeah. The How co- well do you remember it? Was it really, did it leave a lasting memory? Not really, not yeah. really. It's not as uh, it's not as great as the the cover art for the second film, or even the first one for the for that matter. Right. You know, when you think of the of the first film, you know they had the knife in the uh, Adidas shoe. shoes. Mm-hmm. That was that was very memorable to me. And then, and of course, the second one had the chick with the uh, backpack. You know, yeah, the backpack with the Jason mask and the Freddy glove, and you know. But this one, you know, I I liked it. It felt really punk rock. Had like a punk rock feel to it, I guess. Does it? Do you feel connected to this one at all when you look at it? Does it? Can it? Does it tell you anything? Like at least the second one told you. You know, it had the whole Freddy Jason thing in there, which, you know, kind of lets still... you know what you were getting into. Um, yeah, this one, it, you know, it's got the the chick with the cleavage and the knife. I guess that's all you need to know about this movie. <laughs> there's, there's really, there's really nothing else. And then it, it kind of got the Sleepaway Camp three with the yellow spray paint. That's you know that sold it for me, but well, I'm ready if you're ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking ready. Are y'all ready? I think they're ready. <laughs> so for those who have um, the Scream Factory Blu-ray on your uh, setup menu right now, um, I'm gonna count down and I'm gonna say now after one. So on the play film option, we're going in three, two, one, now. Black screen, I'm scared. Oh, MGM roar. Mm. I wonder if that tiger was, or lion was abused. Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> tiger. What? What are you talking about, man? Whatever's going on over here in my what, side. What are you? What are you smoking? <laughs> I don't know. Sherm. A Michael A. Simpson film, not Michael Simpson. Michael A. Simpson, mind you. And this is same director and writer? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this chick right here, um, I think they got this actress from New York, even though they shot this in Atlanta. Is that her panties hanging from her light there? I think she had some black panties Does hanging. Does she have panties hanging from her light? Yeah. Dude, you notice everything. Like, I totally missed that. <laughs> Hey man, she just took her shirt off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, she's a card carrying member of the the itty bitty titty committee. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. You know, it's just her. You know, her her tattoo is a little ironic here because she's a. Uh, you know, if you, you notice her tattoo says milkshake, and mm. she's flatter in the fucking Everglades. You know, do you think they put that tattoo there just so they can get a close up of the tits? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's like a nod. It's letting you know that we're about to watch some tongue-in-cheek shit. Look at all those kids in the background. Like They're like, there's a movie going on. Yeah. What yeah. are they doing? 
And I guess this is supposed to be like New York. I don't know. I'm assuming they shot this in in Georgia though. I took it as New York when I when I when I watched it. Yeah. And it's like I love this opening because it's like all of a sudden fucking Angela's got like her CDL. <laughs> She she knows how to drive that big truck uh, yeah. very well. Yeah. It was highly unlikely to have an opening like this for a Sleepaway Camp film. I mean, I yeah, mean would, would yeah. you agree? Yeah. <laughs> that You know, when I think of this, when I think of this opening scene, though, I don't know why. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's a good way to open it up, I think. Kind of gets right to the point. Mm-hmm. Kind of makes me wish they would have stayed in the city. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. Think about that. Yeah, if they'd have had some kind of uh, youth like community center in mm-hmm. like in an urban setting. Mm-hmm. I saw some trivia where they were saying that like the the truck number corresponded with Nightmare on Elm Street, like it was um, like an like they were paying homage to it or something, but. That number was 1426, and I believe the address in Nightmare on Elm Street was 1428 oh. Elm Street. So, I want to say there's yeah. some other little nods to certain films like that. Um, yeah. I can't. This, this movie's chock full of references. But yeah, this, uh, it's, and it's a good opening, you know. It's nothing like real gory, you know, and I think we were talking about earlier about about how a lot of these death scenes got excised, mm-hmm. how they got cut, you know, and they're they're kind of tame too. Yeah, but they're creative. Some. They're <laughs> you, Some. you have to admit they were uh they were trying to um they were trying to come up with creative death sequences. They weren't just going for like the stabs or the slit throats and no, but you know. they go with a lot of beating you over the head with a stick. Angela is back, dude, and you gotta love this fucking heavy metal opening. Yeah, the soundtrack. To, yeah. <laughs> yes, I miss openings like this, and um, this could only be done in the late eighties. Now, in this movie, who did we bring? Who? Any big hitters? Any stars? Michael J. Pollard, dude. Mm. Anybody else? No, I would say Michael J. Pollard. I mean... And they probably brought him on just for that? Yeah, and it probably didn't cost him much. I mean... They was may, his, where was he at in his career, do you know? Well, he's never really had, like, a huge career. Like, he did, you know, he did uh, Bonnie and Clyde. Um, and after that, he kind of was just a character actor. Like, he did... Um, oh, God. Have you ever seen this movie called Vengeance is Mine? Sounds familiar. Can't. Okay, well, he was in. I plead um, the fifth. Yeah, yeah. He was in Scrooge. Do you remember seeing him in Scrooge? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has that face that's like, I've seen him. He's recognizable. Like, right. Kind of like Clint Howard. He played fucking. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He kind of has like a Clint Howard career. Never been a huge star, but he's made all these appearances. A, and A Clint Howard career, but looks like Polly Shore. <laughs> yeah. An old Polly Shore. Yeah. He even talks like the weasel. Yeah. He was in Roxanne. Um, yeah, he played Bug Bailey and Dick Tracy. Uh, dude, there's another movie called uh, American Gothic. Have you seen that? Yeah. I, yeah. Have you? I don't know. Are you lying to me? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds very familiar. American Gothic um, had Michael J. Pollard in it, and it's just him doing what he does best, just acting like a complete goof and, you know, oddball, which I think he's a weirdo in real life, too. Ooh, he's yeah. A, look at that chick. Yeah, I know. She kind of re- reminds me of uh, your girl from part two. I okay. think she does have an alley thing going on. Mm-hmm. And here's Bobby, fucking 35 years old, going to camp. That's me. <laughs> yeah. And here's uh Tracy Griffith, who is uh I thought she was uh Melanie Griffith's sister, but she's actually her half sister. Well that's somebody. We also it looks like we got Billy Idol in the background. <laughs> yeah, that is totally or fucking slim shady. hmm And this chick right here, Arab, uh she was originally gonna be named Action. Arab? Yeah, a lot of these uh all the poor kids are named after the characters from West Side Story. Okay, I was about I, I was going <laughs> to question you that on that uh, uh, since the last one was you know somewhat yeah 
the brat pack, right? Yeah. And and also the uh the the privileged kids or the rich kids, they were named after the Brady Bunch. Oh, that's I like that they kept that. Yeah. Peter, Jan, Bob, this one dude. It's just like a fucking That's It's a wig. She's trying to look like Maria. Yeah, do you think she stalked her? I mean, she's wearing the same thing too, you know. Yeah, I, she put a lot of thought <laughs> into getting to this camp. She did. She did. Who's this? I like the oh man. Who's the shy racist? <laughs> yeah, the racist chick who is fucking hot. I've always had a thing for her. Her name's uh, Kim Wall. I don't know. It, I can't say I have a thing for her right now in that dress. The, really? Yeah, look at that dress, man. It's huge. I don't see a dress. At well, <laughs> I don't see her on the screen either. I, I just like the the scene where she's in the fucking uh, in the girls' cabin and she's in her bra and panties. Nah, all like no, leaning yeah, up against yeah. the wall she's like i'm gonna tease you a little bit but i'm not gonna show you anything like mm-hmm. but uh dude she was actually in uh, american reunion the uh really american pop four yeah yeah she what, what was she uh, in there she played uh the chick who was like lusting after chris klein she was uh that Kara girl's um mother have to mom. be a mom it was her mom and she was like dancing you know, I don't know. You'd have to go back and watch American Pie Four, but that is totally Kim Wall, the the racist chick that we saw earlier. It's like, I like how she just kind of comes up to Angela for this the drugs. You know? Yeah. Angela has no idea what she's talking about well, either. Look at her. I mean, Angela just looks like she's fucking done drugs. You know? Yeah, it looks like she's been up for five days. Yeah. I think we were talking about this in the uh, uh, our episode, um, Sleepaway Camp Two episode. We were talking about uh, how Angela in this one is a little more exhausted. You know, it's like... Looks worn out. Yeah, like she's just tired of doing this shit. Mm -hmm. Well, look at how she's kind of... She seems sad. Mm -hmm. Like she's lost all hope and faith in these campers, you know. I like how this one begins. Like this is really... Yeah. Watching this, I'm psyched. Yeah, it kind of immediately just sets you up. Mm-hmm. Like for it introduces the characters right off. Like you know all of the characters within like the first 10 minutes, you know. Yeah, I think it does a for me, I think it did a really good job of doing that. Almost a too good of a job. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's got good characters. Good mm-hmm. character development. I'd say development. It, but they're all stereotypes. They are all stereotypes. <laughs> and bla- <laughs> like on point stereotypes. There's nothing hidden about them. Not at all. No. But that's what that's also why they die. Stereotypes yeah. have to die. Mm-hmm. You know, so she was what was the racist I call her? She's like, but he's Mexican. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, I still I still think that shit's funny, man. It, like uh, it's just it's so it's blatantly racist, racist. man. Yeah. It's just, you just you're not used to seeing that nowadays. No, they would not put that in movies nowadays. I like how she's like, yeah, it'll clean your pipes. Yeah. I but, laughed at that. You know, I watched this with my son and like I laughed at that and uh he didn't get it and I had to tell him what Ajax was. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, did, did he did he know what what cocaine was and uh he just knows it's a drug. He did, yeah, he didn't know why why it killed her. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was pulled, like, she pulled a fucking Cheech and Chong, like, like up in smoke. She she thought she was that chick from Up in Smoke. Where well, like, she's successful though, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's the same camp, right? I I remember you saying something that this was the same camp. This is that, yeah, that looks familiar. Camp. This was supposedly filmed like a week or two after they wrapped on the second one. Can and, you imagine being on having to be the production producers on that, dude? That's Do probably you, probably why Angela's exhausted, man. Yeah. Like, you, did it have the same producers? Yeah. yeah, so these they, you know, I mean, they basically worked on on two films immediately. Yeah, job security. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they and they jumped right into it, man. Like I think that it's the same like buildings and stuff. They just did you know different set decoration. You know. Oh, it's clearly the same because we're building. at fucking we're at fucking New Horizons now, man. They just changed the name though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like how it's the same set. And here's Riff, fucking Daryl Wilcher, looking I mean, looking hard as shit. That dude played like a. Uh, he went on to play like a thug or a gang member in in the movie Free Jack. Ooh, you ever seen good it? movie. Yeah, it is classic. 
And uh, here's Bobby Stark, fucking um, an actor named Haynes Brook. Did he go on to do anything? I'd have to look. Um, yeah, he had a, a role. Um, he went on to do like a role in Fried Green Tomatoes, actually. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Like, and that's probably really about the only thing, though. I mean, <laughs> I know he did other stuff, but he didn't move on to much, just like most of these actors. But um, Michael J. Pollard, man, um, uh, he was in House of a Thousand Corpses. That was like one of the last things he did. I think he's kind of like semi-retired now, but... Okay, so he's not he's not deceased. No, no, he's still alive, but he is old. He's like he's like hitting ninety. I hate hearing about you know actors that I I can remember their image and and find out they're dead now. So it's really good that they're alive. Yeah, yeah. You just wish that they were they were still doing films, mm-hmm. kind of like you know like I wish Michael J. Pollard was still doing stuff. I I think I don't like retirement for my favorite actors like Gene Hackman yeah. and Sean Connery. Like those yeah. dudes could still act; they just choose yeah. not to. You know? What about uh, old Jack? You know, like seeing you know he hasn't been anything in a while. Jack Nicholson, yeah, yeah he's he he may not be completely done. He's probably just waiting for the right script. Who knows? I like what Herman's doing here with his fucking Playboy bunny belt. <laughs> It's like he's he's treating it like it's his dick. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, what what chick would be turned off or turned on by a Playboy bunny belt? Yeah. On an old man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What does he know that we don't? I know, man. I mean, cuz she is fucking she loves him. Oh, with that face though, who wouldn't? And dude, that Yeah, I mean, look at him. He's like a big kid. Now, are these supposed to be teenagers? Well, of course, yeah. Well, I guess it is a teenage wasteland. Yeah, yeah. I'd say they're all in their early to mid-twenties, though, as usual. But um, They're afraid we'll fuck. I like that chick, man. Um, yeah, I think I was saying earlier, her name's Arab, but it was, her original name was supposed to be Action. Her character name was supposed to be Action. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it got too confusing. For the director, <laughs> for the director. <laughs> um, so. Oh, uh, can you imagine that? That would suck. Yeah. Oh but, man, this dude means business. Yeah, this is uh, this Barney Whitmore. I assume they were going for like a Barney Fife type reference. <laughs> um, but uh, this is like the father of Sean Whitmore from the second one, and uh, played by a dude named Cliff Brand. Who would not go on to do shit, really? How did she know? Like, are you a cop? Like, yeah, I, I think that was just an arbitrary piece of dialogue to put in there so that Riff could start burping and, and you know, start this fight here with Tony. This doesn't have the best script. Like, how did she know he was a cop? You know, he just well, walked in. Well, the. Uh, the Sandra Dorsey chick, um, Lily, mm-hmm. she introduced him as Officer Barney Whitmore. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And then he he manhandles this dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. He didn't even slap him though, really. Who that guy? Uh, who the Mexican? Yeah. He it, it looked like he barely touched him. Look at that chick! Like, oh, she's so hot, man, Jan. Mm-hmm. She is so hot. That is a chick named. Um, her name is Stacy Lambert, and apparently this is the only thing she's done too. Like she didn't go on to anything, and I'm surprised. That's kind of sad because these, they're not bad actors. Cute faces too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here we go with the uh, obligatory tit scene that you gotta have in Sleepaway Camp sequels. Oh, oh, Kim Wall. There, there you, you go. go. Yes. Oh, yep. Yep, this is this is why we watch these movies. <laughs> you know, this is why we love them. Yeah, I'm speechless. I know. And this chick right here, uh, Jill Tereshita, Arab, mm-hmm. she was in Night of the Demons. Do you remember her in that? No. She played a character named Franny. Was she with the girl that touches the... Cuts herself. 
the first two? Yeah. Was she one of the first two? I don't. Did remember. her? F- I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm distracted by boobs here. Even though Angela has her completely, she has her tits completely covered up. <laughs> yeah. We never did find out what it, what that thing is called. Like is, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a corset girdle. Yeah, it, it's weird. I've never seen a chick wear that before. A tit chastity belt. <laughs> yeah. Man, how would you feel knowing you were in the same cabin? Huh? Like, if you were in the same cabin that Angela had, like, killed before at a camp, like, would that Uh, freak you out, or would you like to stay in that cabin even more? Are you saying, like, if I were Angela? Well, if you were a kid at a camp and you found out you were staying in a place where there was a killer. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude. Well, do they even know? Do they even know? I, I, I thought think. that's what they just talked about. Okay, yeah, they're talking about Angela Baker, yeah. Yeah, it would, uh, I'd have a little bit of anxiety about it. She tries to sneak past. Oh, yeah. I really thought she was going to get caught here. I was like, how is she going to get this over? <laughs> but... Yeah, he points out how old she looks and... Everybody does in this. It's like Charlie's Farm. (laughs) (laughs) We're not going to bring up that film. Maybe we should do a commentary on Charlie's (laughs) Farm. (laughs) I think we should. Oh, man. Yeah, you know the dude that plays Barney? um, You mentioned that like he had like a Patrick Duffy thing going on. Oh, yeah. That's all I see. Think about how awesome it would have been uh, if Michael Parks had played him. Ooh. The dude from Tusk. Mm-hmm. That would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, back in this day, like, you could have hired him probably pretty cheap. Like, they should have got somebody other than that dude to play Barney. Yeah. Because, like, you, you were saying earlier, like, he's, he's set up as, like, this adversary for Angela. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, and, total. And it's just you got this... Uh, this dude that plays him who's just like not very charismatic you know not a real good actor he has a persona right like he looks kind of manly and shit but dude think if they'd have got Michael fucking Parks or like Henry Silva or um, fucking you know Michael Simpson was working with Jim Varney around this time like he could have hired Jim Varney Ernest (laughs) dude cause (laughs) that would put like a whole um that, yeah, that would, uh, uh, put like a whole new meaning to Ernest goes to camp. Oh, can you imagine when Ernest saw his first pair of tits? What would happen? <laughs> <laughs> would he freak out? He'd do the. <laughs> I just see him turning and, and running with the big <laughs> mouth all open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. or, or, or that he, puts a whole different outlook he, on this movie. He'd now, either do that or, or he'd do the the a. <laughs> But he was working with Michael Simpson. He worked with Michael Simpson on a movie called Fast Food. Ooh. And uh, it's like, Is that dude, the second it, time you brought up that movie? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, if he got Jim Varney for Fast Food, why could he not get him for one of these movies? I'd love to see fucking Jim Varney in a, in a horror movie. I don't know if he ever did a horror movie other than, I'd, like, Ernest Scared Stupid. stupid you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I doubt he did. I always saw him as, like, a kid actor yeah I mean it would make this character I don't know a little bit just a weaker l- well it'd give it some star power because the only star power you have in this movie is Michael J. Pollard and he doesn't last very long it's like they only brought him in for maybe a day or two but uh true that I mean this dude's just kind of boring you think they were trying to give him his job? His, his name his is Cliff break. Brand, but it should be Cliff Bland. I just see Dallas everywhere. You're seeing Patrick Duffy? Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing Patrick <laughs> yeah. Duffy every time. And then, like I said, I see Polly Shore right here. Yeah. I'm curious to know why you think that looks like Polly Shore, though, dude. He even I, talks I, like I, him. I'm yeah. trying to see it. I just don't see it. I, I think <laughs> it's the big forehead and curly hair. Yeah. 
That could that could be Polly Shore, maybe seventy. In years the old. nose, yeah. And listen to him talk. Yeah. It's like all the energy has ta- been taken out of Polly Shore. <laughs> Billy Idol here. <laughs> Fucking Slim Shady. No, when did Slim Shady ever wear a leather jacket? Oh, that's with true. <laughs> yeah. But he is. He's hanging out with the rappers. You know? Hey, is that a? He's the, hanging out with the rappers. Is kid. that the chick from Sex in the City when she was young? Jessica. She does, oh, she does have a Sarah Jessica Parker thing going. I think it's the hair. Yep, right there, the hair and the way she, I don't know, she looked just like her. I'm so surprised that chick did not go on to do anything else. Come on out, sweet pea. Well, she didn't get to last very long in here to show her acting chops. <laughs> no. Nobody lasts long in this one, dude. <laughs> Not at all. It's just like characters set up and then they die immediately. You were saying earlier how this one had a sense of expediency about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. it I felt like that they introduced those characters so strong and then they just die off. Yeah. Like you don't get to see any more of them. Yeah, like Snowboy. He's a pretty interesting character, you know. That but. mask that she just pulled up was had red on it. Yeah, and remember the second one That's did not po- have red, <laughs> yeah. and it was blue. Continuity error. Yeah, I think that was supposed to be the same mask though from part mm-hmm. two. That's how I took it. Yeah, and this dude is obsessed with fucking fireworks, man. Yeah, is is would you say that's his downfall? Well, of course. Death by fireworks. Well, you know, I'm just trying to gather what I'd have to do to get killed by Angela. You know, it, <laughs> that I know, right there I know was, because she kind of takes like personal uh, character traits, characteristics, and she uses that to her advantage. She uses it against you. Mm-hmm. Like whatever your weakness is or whatever she doesn't like about you. Yeah. Yeah. And she doesn't like fornication. We know that. Mm-mm. And there, there's that same stick that she... Um, yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah. I told told my son about that. Yeah. Same one that she poked Allie with. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, you mentioned to me um, that you're not a fan of these deaths. No, not a fan. I'm not either. I'm uh, not a fan. I'm not either. I think that um, the deaths got better in this film as it progressed. Yeah. But yeah, there was I mean, a lot of bodies wasted on a stick. Yeah, supposedly there was a death scene that I think got cut. Either that, or they never filmed it. But it was with Herman, and she had like a fire poker, mm-hmm. and she was gonna like I guess poke him right in the dick, and uh, and I and she was gonna say like some one liner like like weenie roast or something. It was something really <laughs> stupid, and I'm. I guess they didn't have it like they didn't. They either didn't have the time or the money. But um, think think about it. That would have been pretty cathartic to have Herman die mm-hmm. that that way. Like, yeah, get poked in the dick by you know fire poker, a flaming fire poker at that. I just also think it's really weak. I don't feel like she was actually hurting these people. No, no. I mean, it's a fucking stick, dude. And doesn't she kills the chick with like one blow, right? Yeah, watch watch her go all crazy. Look at, look at, this, this reminds me of like this an dude's old wearing fucking long johns here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, he has a Playboy belt, but long johns. <laughs> I mean, shit. Yeah, he. <laughs> I mean, he deserves it. Yeah. Right in the mouth. You know, and, and they they always say that, like, less is more. No. For this movie, I would say more is more. <laughs> because the shit that got cut, it makes this movie look silly. Mm-hmm. It really does. One of my favorite lines ever. Good thing you're dead, because in a couple years, your breasts would have been sagging something terrible. Angela's always got the best one-liners. one-liners. She's like Freddy. In that aspect. Mm-hmm. Always got something smart assy to say, like after she kills him. She's good with puns. <laughs> I 
How do you feel about the performances from these actors? I mean, if you had to compare it to, like, say, part two. Think I that don't... acting was better in part two? or Maybe a little bit. Yeah. But I I don't know, because I kind of like these guys. But, like, you, it's different. The characters are different. Like, I don't know. They are. They, like It's like I was saying earlier, this one has, like, a punk rock feel to it. A degenerate feel? Yeah. Yeah. Or trouble, you know. Teenage Wasteland. Yeah, this is like the return of the Living Dead of the yeah. sli- of the Sleepaway yes, Camp yeah. movies. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it's a uh, it's grungy. It's like they were approaching a new era. But for the acting, I I also can't say that I don't know. Maybe it's the script. You know, everything just feels so rushed, and it yeah. seems like the script was just almost at times whatever the first thought out of the mouth was. The script's kind of hammy. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that totally. I mean, it seems like they put a lot more thought into the second one, like uh, methodically how it was going to play out mm-hmm. and how and this one was, was rushed. Yeah. Like Angela seemed to, uh, I may be wrong about this, but it seemed like Angela was plotting the deaths a little more in the second one. And this one just seems like she's just bumping them off. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, dude, this is like no a, rhyme or reason. Behind she's a it. machine gun. She's a walking machine gun. Yeah. And she's back this year to slash last year's record. Yes. I, th- yeah. I think that was the tagline. Oh, it happens. Yeah, because she. I, I'm not sure if she tops the body count from the second one. I'd have to look that really? up. Really? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think the body count in this one is 16. But. And here, here's a scene where uh, Valerie Hartman, the chick who played Allie in part two, mm-hmm. she would go on to become a raccoon wrangler. In this scene right here. <laughs> that was the work of Allie, apparently. <laughs> Looks like a little baby raccoon, too. Uh, yeah. Stop it. Supposedly those two had a real life relationship. It shows. Yeah. I, I can I, believe I, that. It was short lived though. It didn't last very long. I think, mm. I think it pretty much ended. And that how a like, lot of romances go on probably movie yeah, sets. They, they had a little short little fling and then, and then it stopped. See, this was really fast. I, I, I didn't expect these, these two to die this fast. I was kind of expecting, all right, let's get a little another scene of everybody interacting. But no, she just... Goes on a rampage as soon as she's ready to start killing. Yeah, and why, dude? Why are they fucking sleeping <laughs> together? Why are they sleeping next to each other like that? <laughs> I mean, dude, what do you expect them to be doing? Spooning? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess they are. You know, dicks up, but this was pretty awesome. Yeah. I think, would you say this is probably the most violent one on here? The most violent death? Yeah, or gore shown. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. The face. Maybe. I mean, but every death only just gives you just a little bit, you know. But I feel like this is the, the goriest spot right there. Yeah, probably. I mean, she hit him with the same <laughs> fucking stick. <laughs> yeah. I like how she's in her nightgown. Yeah. Yeah, these these characters definitely don't last long. It's almost like a fucked up superhero. <laughs> how so? You'll have to elaborate on that one. <laughs> because she's just taking out the trash before it gets Yeah, okay, older. okay. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. She's Kinda like uh, a fucked up superhero. She's the angel of death. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's her her moral imperative, you know, is to clean up the camps, you know. She's Get, almost like like a superhero that is disgruntled now that she's having to continue to do it. It's <laughs> yeah. like things didn't change. Crap. Uh, she's wore out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. They had to add an explosion here to give it some production value. 
I always thought this was corny as shit, where she's like, she pulls out the marshmallows, but what do you expect? Campy 80s well, horror Well, I film. would say, yeah. Uh, well, what makes it, they stay on it too long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, they yeah. stay on it too the, long. The shot, yeah. It lingered. They stay on it too long. Yeah. Now, what was this competing against year wise? Where was this at with in the Friday series? Oh, like um, year wise, what release? Like what Friday? Well, movie? this I mean, this came out in 1989. So, um, are you talking about the Friday the 13th films? Like, mm-hmm. where does it correspond with those? Yeah, you know, because it was well, Sleepaway Camp is weren't they kind of like at one time next to each other or was was it all at well two and three were back to back clearly i mean they shot two and three within a span of like six or seven weeks but um yeah around this time jason takes manhattan was coming out and i mean the whole camp thing had oh been... this is way better than that <laughs> yeah. i give i, I will give, have I, to agree i give this better than jason takes manhattan i will have to agree with that yeah yeah this actually is a better movie than jason takes manhattan I mean, at least makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, uh, yeah, Jill Tereshita, she, uh, she went on to do, I think she was in Playboy in the early 90s or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you know this uh, Sandra Dorsey chick here uh, who plays Lazy Lily? <laughs> she, um... With the steak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's like cooking a steak at like fucking <laughs> nine in the morning. Um, she was, she was actually, uh, she was in an, uh, old 19, uh, 76 movie, I think, um, by William Girdler. Do you remember the movie Grizzly? Mm. No. She, oh yeah. If you haven't seen Grizzly, you need to check it out. It's a, you know, so then she has a name, those ecological horror films, you know, like it was like right after Jaws, you know, but, um, she was in that. And she went on to do a couple of Fairly Brother, Fairly Brothers movies. Um, she was apparently in Dumb and Dumber Two, which I don't remember in that, but she's in that. And then uh, she's also in the Three Stooges. So, so she's a somebody. Not really. <laughs> so she, the Pollard guys, Michael J. Po- oh yeah, dude, Michael J. Pollard is legendary, dude, legendary. Bonnie and Clyde. That's all you got to say. That's it. Yeah. C. W. Fucking Moss. And I'm I hated how this death was cut short. Okay, well that's in competition for the firecracker. Yeah. But you said it's cut short. The, yeah, they didn't hang on it for very long, but yeah, I mean Do you think it helped it? Maybe so, because you know we always talk about how the Friday the thirteenth films were cut for that very reason too. You know, excessive mm. gore, which you see it nowadays and it's no big deal, but in many ways, I think it made them more effective. Mm-hmm. Um, with this movie, it's it's hard to say um, because, of course, the makeup effects aren't as top notch as some of the Friday the Thirteenth films. I mean, they were obviously working wow. on a shoestring budget. But we're also now at Blu-ray quality. Yeah, which is why, the VH- that, make, that makes them look worse. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> VHS, I imagine yeah. it wasn't as bad. I can't, you know. Yeah, no, I mean. I didn't notice a lot of the inconsistencies when I watched these films as a kid on VHS. Well, me neither. That's what I was getting at. But I mean, yeah, when I watch them on Blu-ray, I'm picking up everything, dude. Like I'm seeing the latex foam, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just the 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 makeup that they coat on it sometimes, and like, the what fake if, blood. What if back then they were like, "Oh, this will pass for VHS." You know, they didn't. Yeah, they, they, didn't. they didn't go. Hey, <laughs> hey, we got. Will this pass 4K? Yeah. What, what's 4K? Yeah. Oh, it's something that's gonna come like 20 <laughs> years later. 4K was the budget for this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like how she just moves in to all these camps. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting how she actually infiltrated. Like, how did she get to know Maria Nicastro? Like, how did she assume her identity? 
Yeah, that's what I was saying. That <laughs> took a lot of plot and plan. That's what I was getting at yeah, earlier. Yeah, and, and how long I, now that she... I'm thinking about it, it's fucking bullshit. Like, how did she do that? Yeah. I mean, she would have had to have done her homework for months, probably. Like, how did she know she was going to the camp? Knew what did... she was going to wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she had the same fucking clothes, And then clothes, she dude. had to go learn to drive no, a big truck. Yeah, and not only did she... She, um, she didn't she, steal her clothes. She was wearing those clothes, clothes already. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's fucking weird, dude. That is. Uh, oh God, something's going on at the ranch. He's worried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Imagine Michael Parks playing that fucking dude, though. Well, you would have to change the whole cast. No, dude. Michael Parks was doing B films like this back in the day. Oh, I mean, that's. Why I guess I I just remember him or know him. From Tarantino and Kevin Smith. Mm-hmm. Well, see, that's exactly why they used him is because he did do, you know, he did, you know, sleazy films, exploitation films. Well, I bet if I go back and probably watch some that I have saw a long time ago, I'd pick up on him. Yeah. Do you remember uh, Michael Parks in a movie called The Evictors? That's really good. Mm-hmm. What? That was... Um, what year? N- uh, late 70s, maybe. Oh, 70s? Seven. Then it's gold. Yeah, but it was from the director of uh, The Legend of Boggy Creek and The Town That Dreaded Sundown. The dude that's from, he's from Arkansas. Was it that guy's third film? I don't know if it was his third film, but... um, After Boggy Creek. It's definitely after Boggy Creek. And The Town That Dreaded Sundown, right? I believe it's after that one, too, yeah. Um, Well, that'd that'd be an interesting watch. Yeah, Michael Parks is fucking, dude, he's... He's a legend, but you know, around this time he was doing cheap films. I imagine they could have got him or dude, Jim Varney. <laughs> no, I, Ernest, I disagree. Ernest P. World. That dude. would make it too comical. Dude, are you are you saying that like Ernest can't handle dramatic roles? Yeah, I can't I, <laughs> yeah. I actually see a weakling. Like if I saw Ernest walk up on that guy, like I thought, like I said, I thought that was gonna be uh Barney was gonna be an adversary. He has that hero esque quality to me if you put jim varney in there i'm going to see ernest (laughs) i know (laughs) you know it's kind of hard to shed that image but i'll I'll watch um, this for those puff and then she throws it away yeah for those who don't know why i keep bringing up ernest p whirl jim varney it's because he worked with michael simpson and you know michael simpson used a lot of the same actors most of the time like if you watch fast food it's filled with people from the Sleepaway Camp film. Well, I'm gonna have know? to watch it now. Oh, dude, it's a funny comedy. Like, it's kind of hard to find. <laughs> she, she smoked, took one puff off a cigarette, and which would make a lot of smokers probably mad to see her waste <laughs> that if they were on camp and they had one cigarette, and just to pick up a baby turtle. That's what. Yeah, she did it as a ruse. She was acting like she was smoking, but really she wanted to fucking put that turtle on Angela. It's a shame to see Kim Wall go right here. Like, she's such a detestable, horrible character, but yeah. she's fucking hot. Well, you would also... I don't know. I took her as a little bit more beefy of a character role. I thought she would be around a little bit longer. Yeah, are you... Like, she would... Like, she'd be like the Allie of this one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she is kind of like Allie. She is a cheerleader. Uh, she's a fornicator. And she um, she does drugs. Right here. She says, do you take drugs? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. everybody? And, and then the one-liner right here. Strike, Strike three. three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think Angela's fucking jealous of these girls. Like, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say it's not part of her moral compass or her um, her motives. But I think she's jealous of these chicks. Because well, they're fucking hot, dude. Well, then why would she let the one live? Ah, good point, good point. Well, they're not much competition to her. Why? Because they're taken? They're, you know, they're well, just, the, well, I guess. I mean, she even, like, even she says the dude was kind of cute when he gets, when she first saw him. Yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point. She really, really pulls this chick up high. Yeah, yeah. I did like this one. This is a good death, and this is another one that was cut heavily. Oh, really? Heavily, yeah. Man, it'd be interesting to see that stuff. Yeah, and I think all the footage is lost. Yeah, or it'd probably be out. 
I think the original negatives got destroyed. That would really suck. But Angela once again shows. I think she is a. I think Prowess. she. She's like a superhero, dude. She just <laughs> lifted that girl on that thin rope. All you know. Yeah, dude. She's got skill and finesse when it comes to killing. So she does have, you know. <laughs> Look at this bitch reading a cruise travel magazine like she's like she's going somewhere. Yeah, and she's got a steak grilling. <laughs> and hasn't moved. No. Dude, lazy Lily, man. I think she just gets killed just for being lazy. I I could see that. <laughs> it doesn't take much for Angela to kill in in, in no, this one. No. Like, you know. Not at all. Dude, I um I don't know if I mentioned this in the Sleepaway Camp 2 episode. But Michael Simpson, the the director of the of these films, um, he would go on to be an executive producer of uh, Crazy Heart, the the movie with uh, Jeff Bridges. Oh, the country singer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a good movie. Yeah. I really like that movie. Yeah. Other than that, it doesn't seem like he's done a whole lot after these films, but but that is kind of his claim to fame. I think. An EP for Crazy Heart. You see that grain? Is that what is that grain? Uh, yeah, I think that's film grain. That or it's the first time they tried to CGI some raindrops. <laughs> yeah, you know they it, it kind of because it was like cartoon. It looks it? like rain. Yeah, <laughs> for a second. That's what I love about these old films, though, man. Is seeing the film grain. Yes. Look how mopey Angela is. Dude, she has to take out the trash. I was like that every time my parents told me to take out the trash. Yeah. And this, Ooh, this time, oh. she is literally taking out the trash. Not just figuratively, but literally taking out the now, trash. What's she doing here? She, uh, I don't know. Like, I have no idea what she's doing here. I think it says later, but I told... There, there's the tape recorder that she, she uses, uses to make, to make the, the, the rap song. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I know that song by heart, dude. Yeah, I feel like that would be something that I wrote. It's so crappy. <laughs> or, well, I can't say it's crappy, but... Yeah. Okay, if you if you know it by heart... You want me to do it? Yeah. I'm calling angels, you out. Angels are pretty. Angels can fly. And here is an angel that can make you die. You got no style. You got no flair. All you do is fight and swear. So say your prayers and make amends. Because your life story is about to end. Yeah. Dude, you know you know what that <laughs> needs? The Sugar Hill Gang. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. You, if, that, if you were backed with the Sugar Hill Gang just then. Oh, yeah. Dude. I, dude, you could was, go on the road. Yeah, that was, dude, that's a wicked freestyle, man, by Angela. Now, do you think right here she's starting to show a little heart? She remembers or she's what she wanted? Because it does yeah. turn in, you know, it's not really what happened. Uh, yeah, this is like how she wishes it would have it, it would have been, how it would have played out. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of guilt, remorse. and um, Are those the same actors from the second one? No, <laughs> no. Um, but maybe that's how she pictured them being, you know. She, um, yeah, this is a really morose scene. Well, I, I just at first kind of felt sad for her. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it makes... You actually do because you know that Angela comes from a genuine, wholesome place. Mm -hmm. She she doesn't want to be uh, this, this fucking mass murderer. You know, she just wants peace and harmony and... Everybody to be good. Yeah, she just doesn't want people to fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't fuck in the woods. Or you get. <laughs> I mean, that's like the ultimate message behind that. Behind these films, it's like, don't fuck in the woods. What's her last name? Don't do drugs. Who, Angela? Mm -hmm. um, Angela Baker, but she actually goes by Angela Johnson, I think. Okay, I was just wondering if you know to conceal her, her true identity. Okay. I think it's Angela Johnson, but. Um, I just was wondering if her initials were A I D S. <laughs> <laughs> I 
She just wants everybody to be AIDS free. Yeah. Well, and th- this is that's why. Is that Val Kilmer in the background? <laughs> <laughs> that looked like Val Kilmer. Yeah. It couldn't be though because it's like Val Kilmer now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was he was he fat, bloated? No, nah, he was just thick necked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Look, see him? That, yeah, isn't that Batman right back there? <laughs> <laughs> the Ice Man. Yeah, it, it's almost like. Does she click right here? Or I mean, well, you mean like the, this? Is her breaking point? Dude, she's, or, well, she well, she's snapped already a broke a long time ago. Yeah, but, I mean, does this? I don't know. I think she just misses part two. I think she misses being on the set of part two. I do too. I think that was subtextually. That's what they were trying to say. She's like, like, I don't know what they're trying to tell me with this story. Yeah. It's going on way <laughs> too fast. Like what's going on? She's like, Hey guys, remember part two? Remember how good it was? And you know, I didn't have to wear this, this wig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and do you, do you think that's a wig? I, that's gotta be a wig. Yeah. Cause it looks like a mix of Tina Turner and some dog breed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. She's upset. Why do I have to wear this wig? But there is something hot about this Angela over the other Angela. I mean, dude, I'd I'd bang Angela. I don't know if I'd go that far because D- dick and she'd balls. probably kill me. <laughs> dick and balls and all. <laughs> yeah. I would fuck Angela. She'd be disappointed and then kill me. <laughs> Yeah, she'd be like, it's not even in yet. (laughs) (laughs) You son of a bitch. Uh, That's even if you could seduce Angela, you know, to get her to fornicate. Mm -hmm. Angela don't fornicate, man. Oh, we'd be married. (laughs) (laughs) We'd be married. She'd stop her killing, and then I'd give her that that disappointment that gets her going again. (laughs) Dude, I like uh, Bobby's stonewashed jeans. Yeah. Do you kind of wish stonewashed jeans would come back? No. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. I think they kind of ran their course, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, no, I she's manly. How, how old is this? This is her is. second time to set a hook. Yeah. Well, she is a man. Oh, yeah. She used to be a man. Yeah. She used to be a boy. But yeah. Crap. Dude. I guess I just talked about having sex with a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did. You I did. did. There's nothing wrong with that, man. This is the 21st century. <laughs> I just no. never thought I would <laughs> talk about having sex with a man. Dude, <laughs> I just fucking burned myself. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, if they're hot enough. <laughs> I guess. I just wonder how old Bobby is, man. That dude looks so fucking old. Yeah, I know. That's why it makes this this character a little hard to swallow. Yeah. Looks like one of those redheads from Harry Potter all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, did you see this coming from him? Because I also thought that they were setting this up as him, the good guy, the good kid. Yeah, yeah. like her, like kind of like the the dude from part one. He turns out to be like a a, a budding politician. Yeah, and <laughs> bondage and everything. Like yeah, I did not in- see the bondage. Like I was like, okay, this guy's probably going to be the one to make it to the end, and they're going to do like the reverse final girl. Uh huh. No. He, he he seems charming at first, but yep. then you know he uh, yeah he's got that thing for bondage. Tie me up. Yeah. And it comes out and he's like so in your face. I like being tied up, especially next to you. It turns me on. Oh yeah, he gets it fucked up. <laughs> he get, he gets jaxed. He gets Mortal Kombat. He does. He does. Was that Jax that did that yeah. fatality? Yeah. Yeah. And there was footage of that too. I think if you go on the deleted scenes of this uh, Blu-ray, it shows some of the deaths the death scenes. Yeah, well, when but I was looking at his, his actually looked fake. Yeah, I'm, I'm it, quite... yeah, it shows. It looks like 
his arms inside a shirt. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah. Okay. And, and here later when it shows him again, you can clearly tell his arms are in his shirt. I kind of like, mm. I feel like they just didn't, do you think it was, they ran out of money on this and they just tried to rush it through mm-hmm. because some of the stuff is a little, you know, it's like, ah, yeah. Okay. How did this dude get a gun in here? I don't know, man. That would not fly nowadays. How did he? I was like, a gun? Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. When I saw that, yeah, for the first time, I was like... He is New Jack. This motherfucker is packing. Yeah, you think he's, you know, a knife? And then all of a sudden, bitch, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they sh- they I'm going. Had, I'm sh- going. They should have had him hold like it this. sideways. Bobby cleaned the fish. I like how she just... <laughs> yeah. She's pissed. She's like, I gotta kill this bitch. Yeah. Oh, she knows. She knows she's got to get rid of Riff now. You know that dude, the guy who plays Riff, Daryl Wilcher. He's like a nerd in real life, man. Oh, really? He is nothing like that, like the thug character. I was watching him in the special features. They were doing interviews with him, mm-hmm. and the dude was like so just well spoken and like, you know, he just said that he was basically not playing him himself. Like he's nowhere near like that. I think of Molly Ringwald for some reason every time I see this chick. Well, she's got got the red hair. She, you know, she's charming. Little pink hue on her face, and you know, she, uh, the actress uh, Tracy Griffith, actually supposedly auditioned for Angela in in part two, and mm. she did. She didn't get it. I don't. Think and I so don't. they. I mean, of course, she didn't get it, but but they uh, they offered her this role and. The rest is history, as they say. I had some Reeboks like that. I think I did, too. I think I had some fucking, like, yeah, high tops like that. I think mm-hmm. they were Velcro and shit. Oh, dude. I, I, I like how this dude's, like, talking about gangs, and he's like, yeah, the baggy pants, man. And this dude does not have baggy pants. <laughs> he's got, you know, the tightest fucking jeans on. Now, why is she in here? Or why did she come here? Well, it's an experiment in sharing. Like, well, no, no. Why was she her character coming to the camp? Well, that's what I'm trying to say. It was oh. like a government thing. Like, uh, I think the uh, the rich kids were were paid to come there. Oh, okay. Or or charged. I thought it was charged. Yeah, they, they say how much? How much did they charge you? And she said three thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was getting at. Okay, so she's pretty they, much supposed to be a goody good, yeah, or a not a a uh, waste, a degenerate. What the hell are you trying to say? I don't know. I'm stoned. <laughs> Whoops! Cat's out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> In case you didn't know, <laughs> yeah, Chad's a little baked. <laughs> but I mean, no, I see what you're saying though. You're you're trying to figure out why they're doing this experiment, and it's basically for. You yeah, know, her lo- parents wanted to get rid of her for the summer. Yeah, but they're trying to get these kids to intermingle with the uh, the lower class kids. Mm-hmm. You know, um, <laughs> it's like it's like the greasers and the socias. <laughs> what, what did he just say there? He's like, I'm moving to Ohio. Yeah, he, he's like, and he I had love, a condom, wasn't he? <laughs> I love safe sex. <laughs> yeah, you know what? She kind of deserves to die. Yeah, she should. What, what happens to him at the end? She deserves to die. Yeah, I know. She's detestable. That's why She's, that's why the ending doesn't make a lot of sense. And then like Angela all of a sudden has a crush on Tony. Like I didn't get that part either. Remember she says something like, I always had a crush on you or something. I, didn't, I mean well, Oh, you mean like I thought you were cute too when you when I first saw you kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, dude, there's no scene in here that even hints at that. I don't know. This this one was just poorly written, I thought. Is um, her hair getting bigger? <laughs> who, who Angela or Angela Lily? I felt like it was bigger <laughs> <laughs> I'd say this chick gets fucked up oh yeah lazy yeah lazy Lily she um I remember hearing about this death before I actually first rented this movie I had I had no idea this movie existed um when I was a kid because I had only seen one and two and none of the video stores had part three Except for Premiere Video on JFK. I'm giving a shout out to Premiere Video. R.I.P. Yeah. Is, 
the guy who ran the place was a dude named Doug. And he Doug had Doug Funny? He had huh? Doug Funny? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh but he he um you know, he had this movie and I heard about part three and I, I don't remember the kid who told me that there was a part three. It was one of my friends. And uh, I think, I thought he was lying. I was like, dude, there's no Sleepaway Camp 3. I've never heard of it. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he told me about the firecracker death. He uh, he told me about the chick chick's head being run over by a lawnmower. And I was just like, dude, you're lying. And then I went to Premiere Video and I found this movie and I was like, holy shit. You know, I just didn't know. Because I, I grew up on 1 and 2. And uh, how far, I discovered how part 3 a little late. Okay. So probably you were a few years behind on three. Yeah, I would say it was early 90s when I saw Sleepaway Camp 3. So probably mm-hmm. 92, 93. I, re- I wish there was a little bit more blood with this scene. I, if I can remember correctly. I don't think well, there was. Well, there was. This was another one that was cut. Like, this just... It's kind of tame. Cut. She's like Rose and Titanic. Come back. All I see is a, a head of lettuce <laughs> or cabbage, whatever that shit is that comes out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. Do you think this bitch deserved to die, though? I mean, maybe. I guess she's just. Bitch is eating steak and I'm having to eat fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's sitting around. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're with Angela. Yeah. And you're like, okay, this bitch is lazy. She doesn't do anything. She's got to go. She's yeah. a completely useless character. But for some reason, she's one of my favorites. She really stands out compared to some of them. Yeah. Like, you didn't get to know some of them. Like, I wish the, the Billy Idol-like dude was in here a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. You know. It's funny because he was kind of uh, top build, I think. Kyle Holman, the guy who played Snowboy. Okay. He was kind of like he's like fifth or sixth in the credits for some reason. It's like he's a top build character, but he, but he's like one of the first to die. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but yeah, I always wish. I mean, that, is he that expensive? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but uh, I don't think he went on to do shit really. Kyle Holman. Yeah, if he's that expensive, he's got to go. Nobody's gonna hire him. Yeah, I'd. I mean, I'd have to look it up, but I don't think he. He went on to do shit. But he is one of my favorites, though. I really remember him. Yeah. I wanted more of him. Yeah. Like, could he have not been, like, in the second camp or the third camp? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that but, way you But you notice the, the kids that are in the, the third, third group... Or have disappeared. Well, they're not very well-rounded or well-developed characters. You know... Well, you, are, you, well you, you have the t- love... You have the two lovebirds... Yeah, well, I'm not talking about them. They're they're the main protagonists. You're but talking like, about the girl, like the the Anita girl, the the Greg boy. Which one's Greg? Uh, see, you've already forgot. You don't well, even, that's you don't what even I'm know. Who, you well, don't even know who the fuck he is. Well, no, <laughs> like, I remember when I watched this uh, that it was like I forgot that I thought there was two camps. I totally forgot <laughs> there was a third camp. You know, yeah, and it well, goes so long. That's what I'm saying. Those characters they didn't flesh them out very yeah. well. Um, Point. And and they I, all I agree. They uh, hell, they all die simultaneously too at the end. Mm-hmm. Remember, with yep. the, yeah, the little with boob, the, the, the hatchets, booby, the booby trap. Yeah. yeah, it's like they didn't want to waste any time with those characters anymore. They're like these characters are just here to fucking die. <laughs> this is funny though. Yeah, Th- this is yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, in a good way. Yeah. And I always liked the rap he was listening to also. Like it's, really? no. it's not even fucking it's rap. It's not rap. Dude. It's <laughs> not rap. It's like techno. Yeah. It's probably like one of those <laughs> things that like they were actually listening to rap on the set, but yeah. they didn't have the rights to the music, so they just put this <laughs> this techno. Yeah. yeah. It this, was this tape like, techno. It was before the uh what they call it, house music. Yeah. It house was, trance, whatever. Yeah, it was before the advent of uh of what we know as hip hop now. How do you feel about like dude has a gun? How do you feel about Riff's death? This one? Yeah. I mean, he still has the gun, right? Yeah. She has she already gotten the gun from him? I think she did take the gun. 
by already now, by now. Yeah, I could. I can't really remember. I don't know. Maybe he did have it with him, but but if he it, but she distracted him with the, her fucking freestyle, dude. She distracted him with her flows. Uh, okay, I can't remember if she has the gun already, but she better because like yeah. Well, it was off. I would be it was shooting. off screen, and the reason why I'm glad they didn't show that is because you know it wouldn't have been as uh, cathartic later on when she pulls it on Barney. Oh. Spoiler alert. Well, there. <laughs> okay, I could understand it for that way, but like in that death, the thing I didn't get about it is like he should have started shooting, and then he never showed, even tried. So it kind of confused me. Yeah, yeah, it would have been cool if she and Riff had duked it out a little bit, and he pulled the gun, you know. It was a pretty quick death for him. I mean, well... Because he, he was kind of a bad. He could have even been like, where is it? Yeah. Yeah. But, because I was just confused. Oh, here we go. Yeah. The hero. I thought this was the showdown. I thought this was yeah. going to be the showdown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not so much. I was really disappointed in it. You know, he's like, I'm. if I had a chance, I would do this for my son. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then he's just a smart ass. He's pretty, and his character is pretty well drawn. I think, um, the the character of Barney. You know, I like the how they they kind of tied it into part two, like that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I'm saying. But man. It, I but thought he I, was like He Man, dude. I, Look at him; he looks <laughs> yeah. like He Man. I see what you're saying. He's kind of like a, just a wasted character. Well, no, here in a second, he comes in here. He's been talking all this shit. Yeah. And he comes in here with a two by four that he's swinging around with one hand. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, how are you going to do it? Yeah. You know, and he's smart ass, smart asses through everything. And then it's like, boom. Yeah. He's a smart ass. Yeah. But here I was, he's he man up until that moment. Yeah. And I, I think it's a little, I don't know. I always kind of thought it was anticlimactic to, to have him just die like that, you know, yeah. be, because he is, he knows who she is. He knew about her background, and I, I want to say he was one of the dudes that arrested her. Yeah, it's like tying a story together. It's like Nancy going through the, the, the yeah. nightmare movies yeah. that she was in. Exactly. God. Dallas. <laughs> That's all I see. Still seeing Patrick Duffy, huh? He does yeah. have a Patrick Duffy thing going on. It's funny. You think she really hurt herself? I mean, I know she's limping later, you know, but do you think it was a play? I mean, I guess not. I just thought it was really crazy. I'm sorry? <laughs> she sprained her ankle. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, no, well, she, um, she really did. She really did do it, though. Yeah, because she is limping later. Yeah, I think. she's limping later. Yeah. Like, she literally sends her out there to see the the decapitated body. Yeah. Yeah. She has gone crazy now. She's not even, like, she's not even hiding it. (laughs) No. She's like, okay, hey, y'all, y'all are going to know what I'm doing now. I don't (laughs) give a shit. Yeah. Here I was, man. Yeah. It was like the standoff. It was like the Wild Wild West right here. (laughs) You know, I can just hear her. (laughs) <laughs> and you, then she you, just were you trying to to whistle the theme there? <laughs> <laughs> My mouth is extremely dry. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You want to take you another hit, man? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'll make my now my tongue is gonna stick to the roof of my mouth. <laughs> anyway, my gums are already sticking. Yep, that's when she pulls the gun. Dude, and she dance. She's almost like dancing up to him. She kn- she knows he, he ain't shit. Yeah. I like how they show you early on, too, that she's going to use the pistol. Oh, yeah. And um, I always thought that was kind of cool because you didn't see guns in horror movies a lot. Dude, we now know who shot JR. It was Angela. <laughs> <laughs> it was Angela. Yep. Look, there he is manhandling that two-by-four. Yeah. He came in here. 
He's that, he, he that, almost should turn into the Hulk, you know? <laughs> yeah. And here she a, is, man. That two she's, by four made out of foam. Yeah. He's he's telling the tray to hold him back. That's what's what's happening. Look, oh look, look at the cocky lean on the thing. Yeah. How are you gonna do it? He's not ready. He's just not ready, man. He underestimated her. Mm-hmm. He fucking underestimated Angela because. She she's definitely a lot, a lot a more of a badass in this. She one. thought about the chainsaw for maybe. <laughs> I mean, dude, why didn't he just like fucking attack her? You know what the, this the series kind of reminds me of now. It's like a troubled teen that starts killing people and then just goes even crazier. Yeah. Here we go. Bam. Yeah, it's just like, that, that kind of shocked me, you know, when I first saw this. Like, yeah. you, like you said, I was not expecting him to go. But uh, I think there, there's some horror movies that have used pistols before, but like I think uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, but, you know, where the dude goes around the neighborhood and just fucking starts shooting people. Like, I think it's cool. I think more horror movies ought to do that. Um well, it it gives it that other edge. It's almost like when the zombies started running. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot like that. Yeah, it's like, you know, why why use a knife when you can use a gun type thing. But it adds that different. Uh, added it adds a little bit of a uh, uh, scare to it. Mm-hmm. It does. It takes it up a notch. It's like, yeah, we're not playing around. We're we're pulling guns in this one. I bet, like they're, they're, I bet it'd been fun to drive that Jeep like that, no shots. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, there wasn't a gun in the first Sleepaway Camp. There wasn't a gun in the second one. How many guns do you see in, like, slashers? You, you just, you never see it. That's what I'm saying, man. It's It was a very unpredictable scene. And maybe, you know, she knew that was the only way that she could kill Barney Was was with a gun. You know, she knew she couldn't like use any other weapons on him or outsmart him in any way. Are her superpowers turned off? Mm-hmm. I mean, she she she's got super strength, so why <laughs> couldn't? Does he have super strength? I mean, he was hulking. I guess he looked like he was pretty bowed up. Yeah, like, he was hulking. Like, like, but you are right. Yeah, I think I think that she used the gun. She knew that that was the the easy way. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. everything she's been doing here has kind of just happened to be easy. She just cons them, walks them. Like, she literally, when she switches camp, she kind of, like, it's like leading a little animal mm-hmm. to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> Man, that chick right there, uh, Anita, uh, the black girl, mm-hmm. I was looking up something on her, and she was, what did she do? Yeah, these two characters weren't fleshed out very well. No. But that chick... Um, yeah, Sonya Maddox, the black girl. She um, she apparently was an ICU nurse in Spider Man Three. So that, I think that's probably the biggest thing she's moved on to since this. But yeah, I would say I remember her character more than I do the the dude. Yeah, I mean they're just set up to die. And look at the horrible acting here, <laughs> like. <laughs> The one that's just <laughs> off screen. She she's like she's like oh shit. You know I would be a lot more freaked out. I like how Angela's so matter of fact. Yeah, she's she's very witty. Can you? What was that movie with the guy that uh? He's in traffic and he's just had it. Um. Oh, falling down, falling down with Can Michael you, Douglas. Yeah, I feel like two and three are like falling down, but with Angela. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if you put them together, yeah. Like, well, th- this one especially. I mean, she's, dude, she's had it. She's had yes. It. That's why she's, she's fucking had enough of these kids. And that's why I think I'm honestly they probably ended it at the right time. I know they 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 wanted to keep going, 
But dude, I don't know how 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 much more you could have like drug out this same formula. Yeah, it would have to go to Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like even, even the Fri- even the Friday the Thirteenth films like got a little. Well, here's here's the they thing. Kept embellishing. They're, no, they're smart. They were like part four space. What can we do space? <laughs> yeah. What can we do space? And then some producer came down and said, "We're not going to fucking space." Yeah, like dude, I want to see Angela in the hood. I want to see Angela in space. You know. Uh I mean they they should have kept going, but it probably would have been it would have been a tired formula after a while, like uh pretty much any horror franchise, but but yeah. But be, well, do you think it's because the killer would have to evolve? Yeah. And the stories would have to evolve too. I mean, there's Do you just, think that if it would have gone on they could have continued to tie it to a certain character or would it just be her? You know how they kind of brought the dad in? Do you think they would continue mm-hmm. the story? Do you think it would just start to become like individual stories? That's the interesting thing about Sleepaway Camp is it could be other characters. You know, it doesn't have to be just Angela. You know, you could have, you could make it about somebody completely different, but then it would be like kind of like Halloween 3. People would be pissed off because like it wasn't Angela. Yeah. Like, how did, how did you feel about that whole, this whole death sequence here like I always thought it was kind of corny how she tied him up to play the trust game and you know going from cabin to cabin seeing all the bodies I just thought it was kind of weak it's like it was a quick way to end it I could see that a, a quick way to get rid of those last two characters you know yeah well I also wasn't expecting her to actually let somebody live it's weird it is weird cause she didn't even let Molly go and she loved Molly. Yeah. Like, I would say she was closer to Molly in the second one than she was, you know, with this chick, Marsha. Right. That's what I'm... Yeah. And she's just letting her go. hmm You know, it's just... It's weird. It's against character. It, it feels just do weird. You think, do you think they set it up for a fourth one? Yeah. And, the, and you know, they did have Sleepaway Camp the Survivor. Look at that. Which I think... I think I was reading recently where they actually, you know, because Sleepaway Camp, The Survivor, was supposed to be an unfinished film. But I think in 2010, they assembled enough footage to uh, to finish it. Like, it's completed now, apparently. So there's, I mean, there's a cut of Sleepaway Camp for The Survivor, but I think it's just a lot of, kind of like how Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 was a bunch of, you know, assembled footage from the first film. Okay. Like just to get it to feature length, I think that's what they did with part four. Is they took footage from two and three and somehow you know tied it in to make it work. But it could just be a bunch of flashbacks. Who knows? And I think right here, um, this is when this bitch should die. Yeah, they should like, have had Angela just come up out of the fucking body bag. Punch through the windshield and yeah. kill this bitch because, dude, she this dumps, dude, she dumps him. This dude is in love with her, and she's like, "You ain't going home with me." Yeah, he's, <laughs> you know, he's come from the streets, mm-hmm. and and he thinks he's finally found somebody and his his way out of the streets where everybody is just mean. Yeah, and she's like, "I can't show you to my fucking parents." <laughs> well, I, she has a boyfriend. She's, I mean, she, yeah, she, she has does. a boyfriend. She does, yeah. He's like, "I'm that's coming." She, that's what she says. So, but really, she's like, I ain't bringing you home to fucking mommy and daddy. She's no better than than fucking what's her name, Kim Wall. Yeah, she should have died, dude. She's ra- she's just as fucking racist. Howard Stern here. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Howard. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 that totally does. <laughs> totally does look like Stern. <laughs> oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Very astute observation. <laughs> That's oh, probably just, been the most accurate. Because <laughs> I agree with you on that one. <laughs> most of them, I'm just like, Chad, how do you see that? And then this one, it's like <laughs> dead on accurate. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was a good one. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, I think I've got a contact high. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm crying. Oh man! So yeah, there that we go. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was gold. That was. 
Oh shit, I got a tear. <laughs> I can't think. It was funny to me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, shit. Yeah, that was, that was classic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, Sleepaway Camp Trey. Uh, all right. <laughs> How'd you feel about it? I, I had a good time. Like, this movie is pretty much shit, but. It I, is fun. It's very fun. I had a fun time. Like, I don't get tired of watching it. Um, you know, it's one of those ones that washes over you. You don't have to really actively in, engage and, you know, pay attention to character motivation and all that shit that comes with story. Um, well, okay, but do you think if it has that, what you're talking about, that that's what can make it classic? You know how we said it, it's not necessarily a classic. Do you think because it has that emotion or whatever connected to it that it could be a classic or is what makes it a classic? I think by the time you get to part three of any series, like you just need to not take it seriously. Well, yeah. Like I, I, don't, I don't think there was anything that could have made this movie any better. Maybe if they would have waited a little while. Dude. But what if they did the whole Freddy three and like Nightmare three and put her in the that, same yeah, asylum? That is a rare exception because Nightmare three is fucking classic. I mean, I mean, they took the series up a notch with with that one, but like with these, see, these are one dimensional stories with with one dimensional characters. That's why she should have gone for part three, like an insane asylum. asylum? Yeah. yeah, and she's in there with de- <laughs> degenerates, and it just it, makes it, well, her go a little bit crazier. Yeah, think about this: like if they did take like the the Halloween two approach, and they, you know, the main characters in the hospital or, wh- or whatever, because they've done that with several horror films. It seems like, um, what if Molly had been in the th- in the third one, and they were in like a, a mental ward, Ex- mental together, yeah. And uh, man, this movie, I'm reading the credits here. This movie had some good music, man. Um, yeah. Like the, methods of Madness. Yeah, the songs are real. The songs get you amped. Yeah. Yeah. Methods of Madness uh, was done by a band called Obsession. Would you say this movie just expresses badassness? Yeah. From it? Because, you know, look at the characters. Mm-hmm. Like, you have, they're like full on. <laughs> and whatever they are, they're full on. Yeah. They're. <laughs> uh, but it's just like, and the soundtrack just gets you pumping. Yeah, it's a uh, rebel attitude almost. These movies were made for teenage boys. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's why they they feel like they have a lot of testosterone, and you know, I'm not saying that girls don't enjoy these movies either, but but teenage boys watch these movies for a reason. You watch them for the boobs. You watch them for the blood, and you know, it 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 doesn't it doesn't really go beyond that. You know, but I think um, and, since we've wrapped this up, we'll go straight into the uh, the review part of it. All right. So I feel like we've pretty much reviewed the damn thing. Mm. It's like there's not much you can say about it. But um, my popcorn kernel rating, I'm going to have to go with two out of five. I was going to say two, two. Is that is that fair? Mm-hmm. I, I want to, the movie started off. I like the the way it started starts off really strong for me and then it just kind of get dies or just like it speeds it do, up it but does. it just dies towards it, the end it loses fuel like you you get all these awesome characters that they introduce and they build them up and then the yeah. ones that you kind of like that you thought it was going to narrow down on mm-hmm. they kill off yeah and it and you don't give a shit about the characters in the third act like right, you do. You don't even really know them that much, right? I think that's why you know I started losing momentum during the commentary and the <laughs> and then the third act is because I, I, you know, I'm just sitting here watching it and I'm like, I, I don't, I'm not seeing anything that is drawing me in anymore. Mm-hmm. Like the first act, you had Herman, you right. know, the pervert. Mm-hmm. You had uh, Snowboy, interesting character. Even the firecracker dude was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, with the second group, you had Lazy Lily, you had Riff, you had fucking racist uh, Cindy, um, you know, you had the Asian chick from Night of the Demons, uh, very colorful characters. Mm-hmm. Um, in in the third camp, they're boring. Like if they're you, all the same, they're, they're talking heads. There was enough characters in here that if they didn't, 
Like, let's say they would have done it kind of like part two, focused on some characters and let some characters just come in and out and not yeah. have to die. Right. They could have told more of a story with certain ones. Well, that was more like the first one, yeah. Okay. The first one kind of had the, the characters that were like... Yep. Yeah, I think you're... Because yeah. in part two, it's like all of them died. Yeah, you you're know? right, you're right. Um, yeah, the first one was, was... I would say the first one's well-written. Because not every character um, oh. was a body. You know, they weren't there to just be a part of the body count. The story. So the story probably wasn't up there for the body count that they wanted. It just didn't make sense. It was unbalanced, maybe. Yeah, this one? Mm-hmm. Because they have uh, so many characters. Not like it was unbalanced. I think I think it gets to the point really quick, but it feels arbitrary. It feels like, like towards the end, they didn't know where to go. Like they okay. hit, they hit a creative wall, yep. and um, that's why I'm, I think that like as a character study, this movie is pretty good because it takes some of those stereotypes that we all know from '80s horror films, and you know it sort of you know paints them on the canvas, and you're looking at like a lot of your characters, like the gang members um, and, and the rich kids, like they're all pretty well drawn, and these people played them well. You know they're supposed to be cynical, right? But, uh, and there's a reason, you know, for them dying. But then I think like in the third act, they just, it just runs out of fuel. I mean, I, I don't know. And I think maybe it was the climax. It's gotta be the climax. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's, it's like you, you mentioned, you mentioned, you know, the fact that like she lets her go at the end. Like that's one thing that doesn't make much sense to me is like, why would she just let them go? Right. Um, that's one thing that that is inconsistent in Angela's character from the second one to the third one. Do you think it's because she may have didn't know that they slept with? Because they were away from all the campers. So yeah, she didn't she know. Didn't, she didn't actually catch them, did she? She didn't know that they fought. When it panned up? Yeah. So, so she let them go because of that? Probably, yeah. She didn't know that they, they copulated or fornicated. I guess I just always expected that she knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of like how Jason knows. Mm-hmm. Like Jason's real intuitive, instinctive. He knows when kids are out there fucking mm-hmm. in those woods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got away with it. But that's really the. I mean, that's the only thing I can say about this movie and why it doesn't score major points with me is that it, it just completely falls flat in the third act. Man, it dies for me. And I think that's because they killed off most of the interesting characters early on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So your rating is two. Yep. Mine yep. is two. Well, yeah. Um, that was Sleepaway Camp three, and those are pretty much our final thoughts on it. I'd love to elaborate more, but I just don't think this film really needs it. Yeah, I mean, it it, it it's not allowing us to do that because <laughs> I think we I think we summed it up pretty well. And I mean, and as far as like uh, any factoids, I mean, I think we cut to the heart of it. I think, think uh, you know. I don't think there's anything else <laughs> I can say. No, that's about all I can say. Uh, cool deaths. Oh. I mean, inventive death sequences uh, for the most part. Yeah, well, but kind of. Yeah. I didn't like how it started. What with the garbage truck? No, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay, that was yeah. awesome. I was gonna say the that, cocaine that was, that was, was awesome, pretty epic. Or the, was it Ajax was awesome? Yeah. But the sticks. The sticks. Yeah. That was weak. Yeah. That was weak. Well, had they kept the original death where Herman got the fire poker to the dick, that would have been awesome, you know. But um, but yeah, it ran out of fuel to me. Yeah. Just... And um, I would say we're moving on to return to Sleepaway Camp, but I don't, I don't really want to do a commentary on that one. <laughs> yeah. I just... Uh... I would have to say I need that one to sit in me a little bit longer before I watch it again. Yeah. Yeah, so that was... Uh... That concludes our episode of Popcorn on the Macabre for Sleepaway Camp 3. And uh, this is Dick. The Chad. And we are signing out. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.